The Apocalypse The Prediction of the Fall of Society The end of everything we know and the beginning of a new life in fear and survival. Humans have long wondered what would happen or what it would take to ruin our society. Zombies, meteor strikes, volcano eruptions and perhaps most relevant for today, nuclear winter have all been up for debate. How the apocalypse will happen and how we would survive it are the most frequently asked questions on this topic. Which is why today I wanted to do something different. I wanted to ask a new question. How would an apocalypse-like scenario affect your brain? What short-term and long-term effects is the apocalypse going to have in your psyche? How are you going to be suffering, not physically, but mentally? Roll the intro. I have Twitter now, you can follow me there if you want to, at the both theorists. Anyways, let's get started. We're going to start off with an easy one that I think a lot of you guys might have heard of before. PTSD, Post Traumatic Stress Disorder. The go-to psychological disorder for traumatic events. PTSD is what a lot of people think of when they hear trauma. It's a mental disorder that you can get after experiencing a traumatic event, such as going through war, being sexually assaulted, being in a car accident, or at last, and I don't have a direct source saying this, but I'm assuming that going, that, that seeing the world end would be pretty traumatic, maybe? And even if the apocalypse itself isn't enough to traumatize you, the events and potentially extreme things that happens to you after the apocalypse almost certainly will, especially if you live in a Walking Dead-like scenario where you encounter psychopaths and villains on almost a daily basis, but more on psychopaths later. We divide the symptoms of PTSD into four groups. Some people experience nightmares and flashbacks to the traumatic event. Some experience avoidance, meaning that they subconsciously avoid things that remind them of the trauma. This is the most common one. Some experience hyperarousal, basically meaning that you get easily startled and respond to ordinary things in a more emotional way than you otherwise would. Some experience negative thoughts and beliefs, meaning that you find it more difficult to be happy and to experience positive feelings. There are other symptoms as well, but one that often gets undermined is psychosis. Not to be confused with psychopathy, which again I will come back to later. You probably know psychosis as that one psychological disorder where you hallucinate stuff, along with schizophrenia. And, well, yeah, you'd, you'd be halfway right. It is true that people with psychosis can experience hallucinations, but that's only one side of the coin. You see, we divide the symptoms of psychosis into two groups, positive and negative psychotic symptoms. Positive symptoms are symptoms that add something to your life, and Positive symptoms are also the only ones that are important in the context of this video, so I'm only going to be focusing on them. Things that could add is hallucinations, delusions, or disorganized behavior. You see something that isn't there, you believe something that obviously isn't true, or you behave in a generally weird way. And I mean weird, not as in putting pineapple on pizza weird, but as in crazy weird. Not being able to do simple tasks like speaking properly, or getting dressed, or obsessing with taking all your furniture out of your house. 
that last one was a particularly strange one. I will link the Quora website to it underneath. This is where The Walking Dead gets a lot of stuff right. We see many surprisingly accurate examples of psychosis as a result of PTSD in the characters of The Walking Dead. Uh, here there will be spoilers for Season 3 of The Walking Dead. You're warned. In Season 3, Episode 12, Carl, Rick and Michonne stumbles across Morgan, who has gone absolutely nuts after seeing his wife eat his son. Who wouldn't? He's overly concerned about security, he writes on the walls, he has delusions about zombies. Yeah, this is a class example of PTSD with psychotic symptoms, probably disorganized behavior. In season 3, Rick on multiple occasions hallucinates Laurie and Shane after they die. This is a visual hallucination and it is one of the most common ones, along with auditory hallucinations, which is when you hear something. Now, it's important to note that this is not schizophrenia, which is a similar disorder with many overlapping symptoms. No, I think this is psychosis because Rick and Morgan only experience these hallucinations after they experience something traumatic. A single event made them insane, a single thing traumatized them and made them hallucinate, thus it can't be schizophrenia. Okay, I've milked this PTSD cow for long enough now, it's time for me to move on to the other type of post-trauma. This one is not called post-traumatic stress, it's called post-traumatic growth. As the name suggests, PTG is the opposite of PTSD. Instead of the victim suffering from anxiety and depression, the person grows and gets, gets a more appreciative view of life. This is, unfortunately, often underrepresented in media, so I haven't been able to find any examples in The Walking Dead. I also haven't seen that many other apocalypse shows or apocalypse movies, so there might be some examples out there, but none that I know of. Antisocial personality disorder. Finally, I am here. Someone who suffers from antisocial personality disorder have difficulty feeling empathy for other people. They have difficulty creating proper bonds with other people, they tend to manipulate other people, and they tend to be bigger risk takers. We divide antisocial personality disorder into two groups, the psychopath and the sociopath, but more on exactly that later. I have this from the YouTube channel Film Theory. If you somehow have heard of my channel but not theirs, First of all, and second, their video will be linked in the description and hopefully up in this corner right now. Just click it, you have to watch it. Or you can watch it, I'm going to summarize it right now anyways. In that video, MatPat says that someone suffering from antisocial personality disorder is going to have a bigger chance during the apocalypse because they are going to be able to manipulate other people and to make other people do as they say. He then goes on to twist his argument, saying that that probably won't be the case, because he thinks that people who are able to cooperate and like each other are going to have an advantage over the psychopath. Now, I could see the argument there, but I would like to argue that the sociopath, and only the sociopath, not the psychopath, would have an advantage during the apocalypse as well. You see, there's one main difference between the psychopath and the sociopath. The psychopath is like an extreme version of the sociopath. He or she is way more manipulative and completely unable to create bonds with other human beings. The sociopath can create some bonds with other human beings and they are by far not as good as at manipulating. I think that killing other people, especially people who pose a threat to you without hesitation, is going to be an important skill to have during the apocalypse, especially the walking dead. I don't know about other apocalypse scenarios, but especially the walking dead. But, but that's just my opinion, MatPat might very well be right on this one. But are there other stuff you can suffer from during an apocalypse? He smoothly segued. Well, maybe, or maybe not. You see, I, I have a list somewhere here of different disorders that you might be able, uh, I think you would develop during the apocalypse. The thing is that they all have unknown causes. On almost all of them it says, 
We don't know what causes these disorders, but it might be due to a combination of genetic and environmental factors. Which I think is a brilliant idea for a t-shirt. I mean, if I ever get a merch store, that one's going up there. I interpret that phrase like this. In order to get the disorder talked about, you must be in a circumstance in which it is likely to develop said disorder, but you must also have the right genes to develop it, or else it won't work on you. We think. But I'm not a psychiatrist, so I don't know. Regardless, here is a list of psychological disorders I think, I personally think, that you are likely to develop during an apocalypse. Paranoid Personality Disorder a disorder in which you don't trust anyone and believe that everyone have bad intentions, except for the people with the same disorder. Schizoid personality disorder, unable to feel joy from social relationships, takes pleasure in very few activities, indifferent to other people's opinion. Anyone who have seen the anime Hyuka know what I'm talking about. Depression, feeling like rubbish, feeling like nothing is worth it in the end, feeling sad all the time, we all like this one. If you have anything else you want to add to my long list of stuff you could suffer from during an apocalypse, let me know in the comment section down below. I am always open for information. I feed on it. Also, if I said something wrong during this video and you have a very good source that says I'm wrong, it is your duty as a YouTube comment sectioner, yes, I just invented that word, to let me know in the comment section down below and stop me from spreading misinformation. Dude, please, I, I, I don't want to spread misinformation. Just please. So there we have it. Some of, if not all, the consequences the apocalypse is going to have on your psyche. Now, if you excuse me, I'm going to go and watch some silly cat videos on the internet, because writing this script and recording this video was really depressing. The mood, not a, not a disorder. What if TCU is beaten PewDiePie yet? Don't forget to vote for your favourite element in the monthly element contest down in the comment section. Who knows, maybe your favourite element will be the next element of the month. There's a common misconception when it comes to being asocial and being antisocial. Being antisocial, I, well I talked about this in this video, it's when you don't feel empathy towards the other people, you're a psychopath or a sociopath. Being asocial means that you just like being alone, you don't like being around other people. So I'm asocial because I like sitting in my room all day and making YouTube videos. I am not antisocial because I feel empathy towards other people. Just remember the difference, please.